Hey everyone, welcome to another read aloud from There's a Boy in the Girl's Bathroom. Um, before we get started really quick, I just want to make sure that you know your assignment today is to fill out four responses on your virtual thinking tracks. And also you are going to do three vocabulary words in the vocab box. So make sure that those are words that either you don't understand or just words that you thought were fun or interesting or words that you really liked. Um, also with your responses, please make sure that they are complete sentences and that they give a lot of detail so that I know you're listening to the whole story. Okay, awesome. Let's get started. Chapter 26. We'll get you at lunch, chalkers, Robbie whispered as Bradley returned to class. You're late, said Mrs. Ebel. He sat at his desk, last seat, last row, and looked at the chart on the wall next to him. Of course, there was no gold stars next to his name. He had already done three things wrong. First, he had knocked over a girl and made her cry. Second, he was late getting back to class. And third, and worst of all, his name was Bradley Chalkers. As long as his name was Bradley Chalkers, he'd never get a gold star. They don't give gold stars to monsters. They beat up monsters. He looked around at Jeff, Robbie, Russell, and Brian. He had to concentrate very hard to keep from crying. The worst part wasn't getting beat up. The worst part was that he knew everyone would love it so much. He imagined the whole school, the boys, the girls, and even the teachers standing by and cheering as Jeff's gang took turns hitting and kicking him. When the bell rang for lunch, he slowly took his paper sack out of his desk. We'll be waiting for you outside, Jeff said to him. Bradley watched him walk out the door. He walked slowly toward the front of the room, then suddenly dashed out of the door and into the hall. Bradley, come back here, Mrs. Ebel yelled. He kept running. So what if he got in trouble? What difference did it make? He pulled on the door to the library. It wouldn't budge. The library was closed during lunch. He tried to think of somewhere else he'd be safe. There he is, said Doug, stepping out of the auditorium. Bradley turned and ran back the way he had come. He rounded a corner, then stopped and made a quick and desperate decision. He opened the door to the girl's bathroom, closed his eyes, and stepped inside. He opened his eyes. Luckily, the room was empty. He held his breath and listened. Nothing could be worse than being beat up inside a girl's bathroom. They'd probably stick my head in a girl's toilet, he thought. He waited. He didn't hear anything. He looked around. The floor and the bottom half of the walls were covered with green tile. There were two white sinks and a paper towel dispenser. There were three toilets in separate stalls. Each stall had a door. It looked very much like the boys' bathroom. Girl toilets appeared to be the same as boy toilets. He was disappointed. <laughs> he couldn't risk going back out into the hall. He leaned against one of the stalls, reached into his brown paper sack, and took out his roast beef sandwich. Someone was opening the door. He quickly put the sandwich back in the bag and hopped into a stall, closing the door behind him. He stood on the toilet so his feet couldn't be seen. He listened. He heard a person walk across the tiled floor and then enter the stall next to him. He covered his mouth with his hand as he heard some familiar but very private sounds. At last, the toilet flushed, and he heard the person zip her pants and walk across to the sink. He heard the sound of running water, and then a paper towel pulled down from the dispenser. Finally, the bathroom door opened and shut. He exhaled, hopped off the toilet, stepped out of the stall, and froze. Two girls were staring at him. One was the girl who had used the toilet next to him. The other had just entered. He wondered which was which. Then he heard the loudest scream he'd ever heard in his whole life. That answered his question. He darted past them, opened the door, and flew into the hall. He rounded a corner and came to a door and pounded wildly on it until it opened. Bradley, said Carla. Hello, Carla. He held out his hand. It's a pleasure to see you today. Oh, man, scary. <laughs> he got caught in the girl's bathroom. Chapter 27. She shook his hand. He walked inside, shut the door behind him, and sat down around the table. You won't believe it, he said as he looked at his picture of the green monster hanging on the wall. You just won't believe it. I'm sure I won't, Carla agreed. She sat across from him. She was wearing a sleeveless black and white checkered shirt. Okay, I'll tell you, said Bradley. I was hoping you would. Do you know where I was before I was here? No. He slammed his fist on the table. The girl's bathroom. He told her all about it, how the girl had used the toilet next to him, and how he thought she had left 
but really another girl had entered. At first I didn't know which girl was which, but then one of them screamed, so she must have been the one. Who was she? asked Carla. Did you know her? Yes, but I don't think I should tell you her name. She probably doesn't want anybody else to know. That's very considerate of you, Bradley. He shrugged. Shall we have lunch? asked Carla. Okay. He took out his roast beef sandwich. Carla set her lunch on the table. She had a carton of yogurt and a plate of sliced tomatoes and cucumbers. That looks good, said Bradley. You want to trade? Okay. They traded lunches. Bradley ate a slice of cucumber. He thought it was delicious. So what were you doing inside the girls' bathroom? asked Carla. She took a big bite out of Bradley's roast beef sandwich. Jeff and his friends were chasing me. He explained, Jeff's got a black eye, just like me. They all think I gave it to him. Well, did you? He could have lied. He could have said, sure. He beat up Jeff with one hand tied behind his back. He knew Carla always believed whatever he said. No, I can't even beat up a girl, he said. Melinda Birch beat me up. Do you know her? No. You like her. She's nice. Carla smiled. Bradley ate a slice of tomato followed by a spoonful of yogurt. I hid in the library at recess, he said. They couldn't beat me up in the library, even if they found me. You can't even talk in the library. Yes, I know. Isn't it amazing? What's that? The library, all the books, and they're all different, aren't they? Carla nodded as she drank Bradley's juice through a straw. I kept thinking about that the whole time I was there, he said. They're all different, but they all use practically the same words. They just put them in a different order. Did you? Just 26 letters, he told her. All they do is move those letters around, and then they say so many different things. Did you? You'd think after a while they'd run out of ways to move them around, said Bradley. Did you check out a book? No, Mrs. Wilcock won't Mrs. Wilcock won't let me. I used to, a long time ago, before I met you. I used to check out books and not return them. I used to scribble in them and rip them up. So she won't let me check out any more she won't let me check any books out anymore. The whole time I was there she kept watching me, saying, I don't want any trouble from you, Bradley. He ate another slice of cucumber. I just wanted to look at a book. I wasn't gonna ruin it. I know, said Carla, and after a while, Mrs. Wilcott will know that, too. I'm trying to be good, said Bradley, but nobody will give me a chance. They will. It just takes time. Do you ever play checkers on your shirt, he asked. Carla nearly spit out her juice. She laughed and shook her head. I like your shirts, he said. I like your socks, said Carla. Bradley looked at his mismatched socks. I thought I'd change them, he said, befuddled. I hate socks that match, said Carla. See? She stuck out her legs. She was wearing white pants. She had on one white sock and one black sock. Bradley smiled. It wasn't his usual twisted smile, but one that was genuine. It was one that up till now had been seen only by Ronnie and Bartholomew. I know something good you can do, said Carla, and Mrs. Ebel will notice it too. What? Homework. The smile dropped off his face. No, no, I can't, he said. Sure you can, said Carla. I can't, his eyes filled with tears. You can do anything you want to do, Bradley Chalkers. I have a lot of confidence in you. He shook his head, but I can't, his voice cracked. Don't say I can't as long as you can't do something, then of course you won't do it. Say I can, say I can, and you can do anything. I can't, I can't, he was crying. Bradley, it's not that difficult. You're making a big deal out of nothing. If you want, I will help you. I can't, he sobbed. Why can't you, she demanded. He wiped his eyes with his sleeve and sniffed. He looked Carla straight in the eyes and said, I don't know what page we're on. Oh, Bradley, Carla whispered. Her eyes glistened. She stood up, walked around the table, and kissed him on the cheek. That's a little weird, but... Okay. Chapter 28. Bradley lay on his bed, on his stomach. He chewed the end of his pencil as he looked hopelessly at the arithmetic book opened in front of him. Next to the book was a piece of paper. In the upper right-hand corner, he had written, Bradley Chalkers, Homework, Arithmetic, page 43, Red Hill School, room 12, Mrs. Ebel's class, last seat, last row, black eye. His handwriting, which was messy anyhow, was made worse by the fact that he wrote with a dull pencil on top of a soft bed. 
He had stayed in Mrs. Elbel's class as long as he could after the bell rang. Bradley, it's time to go home, Mrs. Elbel finally said to him. He looked outside, unsure if Jeff and his gang of bullies were waiting for him. Um, I have a question, he said. Mrs. Elbel eyed him suspiciously. What kind of question? He tried to figure out what kind of question he had. An asking question? I see, Mrs. Ebb, said Mrs. Ebel. May I ask it? He asked. Okay, she said reluctantly. He asked his question. What page is the homework on? The homework? Page 43. He wrote 43 on the top of his sneaker so he wouldn't forget, then took his arithmetic book and stepped outside. Jeff and his friends were playing basketball. He ran home. Now he looked hopelessly at page three, shook his head, and sighed. Question one. What is three-fourths of two-thirds? It was the most impossible question he'd ever seen. His mind wandered. Hey, Bradley, what are you doing? asked Ronnie. Homework. What's homework? she asked. It's work you do at home. Is that supposed to be funny? she asked. No, really. That's what they do at school. They give you work to do at home, and they call it homework. You've never done it before, said Ronnie. I'm doing it for Carla. Now leave me alone so I can concentrate. Question one. What is three-fourths of two-thirds? Why are you doing it for Carla? Ronnie asked. He sighed. Okay, I'll tell you, but you can't tell anyone. Ronnie promised not to tell. We're in love. Really? exclaimed Ronnie. What do you know? She kissed me. Oh, that means she loves you, said Ronnie. Are you going to marry her? Maybe. When I'm older, first I have to do my homework. I'm going to marry Bartholomew, said Ronnie. I know, said Bradley. Now let me do my homework. Question one, what is three-fourths of two-thirds? Hey, Bradley, what's going on? Asked Bartholomew. Leave him alone, said Ronnie. He's trying to do his homework. He can't concentrate when you're talking to him. Maybe I can help, said Bartholomew. What's the problem? What is three-fourths of two-thirds? Bradley asked. Three-fourths of two-thirds, Bartholomew repeated. That's a tough problem, all right. Three-fourths of two-thirds. Let's see. You divide four into? No. You multiply two times? No. Of means divide, said the donkey. Like, if you take half of something, it means you divide by two. You divide three by two and four by three. Bradley started to write that down. No, of means time, said the lion. You have to multiply everything. First, you have to reverse the, nom the nominators, <laughs> said the fox. We, get, we know that's numerators, right? Um, you don't reverse, you inverse, corrected the mother cocker spaniel. I think you have to find a common denumerator, said the elephant. Not for the multiplication, said the hippopotamus. That's only for addition. Multiplication is the same as addition, said the fox, only faster. You cancel out the threes, said the kangaroo. You always cancel out the threes. You multiply the threes, said the lion. Bradley kept erasing and rewriting and erasing and rewriting until there was nothing but a big black smudge covering his paper. On top of the smudge, he tried to write three times three equals nine. But as he did so, his pencil tore a hole through the paper. The answer can't be nine, said Ronnie. If you start with fractions, you have to end with fractions. Bradley slammed the book shut. None of you know what you're talking about, he cried out in disgust. He took the book, paper, and pencil and walked down the hall to the dining room. His mother was sitting at the table working a crossword puzzle from the newspaper. He plopped down next to her and sighed. She looked at him inquisitively. I can't figure out how to do my homework, he complained. Will you help me? His mother smiled. I'd be delighted. Let me see. He pushed his arithmetic book in front of her, page 43. He opened the book to that page. She opened the book to that page and looked at Bradley's torn smudge paper. Okay, first, let me clear away this newspaper so we can have a nice, neat place to work. While I do that, I want you to get a clean sheet of paper. I don't have any more paper. This is all I brought home. There's some paper in your father's desk. Get a sharp pencil, too. He looked at her in disbelief. He wasn't allowed to touch anything on his father's desk. She nodded. Bradley felt a little scared as he walked into the extra bedroom, which his father used used as an office. He opened the top drawer of the old oak desk and carefully took out a pencil and a piece of paper. He shut the drawer, looked around. He shut the drawer, looked around, then hurried back to his mother. She smiled at him. He sat down and wrote, much neater this time, Bradley Chalkers, Homework, Arithmetic, page 43, Red Hill School, Room 12, Mrs. Elves' Class, Last Seat, Last Row, Black Eye.
You have to put all of that, she ex he ex you have to put all of that, he explained, in case it gets lost. She read the first question aloud. What is three-fourths of two-thirds? He shrugged. Okay, she said, the first thing you want to do is write the equation. He still didn't know what to do. She wrote it for him. Three-fourths times two-thirds equals blank. Whenever you see the word of, it means multiply, she explained. Of means times, he said. Right, said his mother. That was what the lion had said. Now you can cancel out the threes, said his mother. That was what the kangaroo had said. You always cancel out the threes. Neither of them known, noticed that Claudia was standing behind them watching. This is, that's not how you're supposed to learn it, she said abruptly. Bradley turned around and glared at her. You have to explain why you cancel them, said Claudia, and they don't call it canceling. It's called dividing by one. I just know the way I learned it, said Mrs. Trockers. If you want, I can show you, Bradley, said Claudia. He looked at his mother, then back at Claudia, then at his mother. <laughs> she knows the way they're teaching it now, said his mother. You'll help me, Bradley asked his sister. Sure, why not? I got nothing better to do. Mrs. Chalker stood up and Claudia took her place. Don't do it for him, said Bradley's mother. Make sure he knows how to do it himself. Claudia worked patiently with Bradley for the rest of the afternoon. When he said he understood something, she made him explain it to her. That was harder. He understood it when she did it, but then he had trouble when he tried to do it himself. By dinner time, they were only a little more than halfway through. Bradley wanted Claudia to help him after dinner too, but she had her own homework to do. You know how to do it, she told him. You can do it by yourself. I need help, he complained. I'll help you, said his father. You will? Let's go to my office. We can work at my desk. Bradley couldn't believe it. They worked together. Bradley was surprised by how much his father knew. He made all the hard parts seem easy. Bradley was a little disappointed by how quickly they finished. He had liked working with his father. He brought his finished homework back to his room. Oh, I get it, Bradley, said Bartholomew. You multiply the numerators and denominators separately, but I still don't understand reducing. It's easy, said Bradley. Here, let me show you again. All right, I think that's pretty cool, you guys, that now his mom helped him, his sister helped him, his dad helped him. All these people were just willing to help him. I think that's really super cool. And it sounds like he knew bits and pieces of it from Mrs. Ebel, but he was confused about what parts to apply. So I like that he knew some of it, but he was able to figure it out after he worked through it with some of his family members. All right, we're going to read one more chapter. Bradley was too excited to sleep. Mrs. Ebel will be so surprised, he thought. She'll tell the whole class only one person got 100%, Bradley. But there were so many things that could still go wrong. What if I lose it on the way to school, he worried. What if Jeff and his friends steal it? Twice during the night, he got out of bed to make sure it was safely folded inside his arithmetic book. What if I did the wrong page? He was no longer sure whether Mrs. Ebel had said page 43 or page 62. He tried to remember exactly what she said to him. He sat up in horror. She never said it was arithmetic homework. Mrs. Ebel had just said a page number. She never said what book. She could have meant history or language or any of his other books. He lay back down and trembled. His tears wet his pillow. He got out of bed early in the morning, checked to see if his homework was still there, then quickly got ready and left for school without eating breakfast. On the way, he stopped to make sure he still had his homework. As he opened his book, the paper fell onto the sidewalk right next to a puddle of water. He stared at it, horrified by what he had almost done, then quickly picked it up and placed it back in his book. He held the book tightly shut the rest of the way to school. He was one of the first ones there. He had to wait for the doors to open. He kept on the lookout for Jeff and his gang. He stood with his back to the school to the school well so they couldn't sneak up behind him. He saw Andy. He thought Andy had seen him too, but if he had, he didn't do anything about it. When the doors opened, he was the first one in Mrs. Ebel's class. He sat at his desk, last seat, last row, and waited. As the other kids came in, he saw them put sheets of paper on Mrs. Ebel's desk. He wondered if that was their homework. He now had a new worry. He didn't know how he was supposed to turn in his homework. Jeff entered, placed a piece of paper on the pile on top of Mrs. Ebel's desk, then came toward the back of the room. It must be his homework, thought Bradley. What else could it be? Shawnee, he said aloud. 
The girl who sat in front of Jeff turned around. Are you supposed to put your homework on Mrs. Apple's desk? Don't tell me what to do, Bradley, Shawnee snapped. You're, you worry about your homework and I'll worry about mine, okay? She turned back around. It was almost time for school to start. What if I have to put it on her desk before the bell rings or it doesn't count? He fumbled through his book for his homework, stood up, then headed for Mrs. Ebel's desk. He became more nervous with each step he took. His mouth was dry and he had trouble breathing. He could hardly see where he was going. He felt like he was going to faint. Mrs. Ebel's desk seemed so far away. It was like he was looking at it through the wrong end of a telescope. His heart pounded and his homework rattled in his hand. Somehow he made it to her desk and tried to focus on the sheets of paper the other kids had put there. It looked like arithmetic homework, page 43. But instead of feeling better, he felt worse, like he was going to explode. Do you want something, Bradley? asked Mrs. Ebel. He looked at his homework, shaking in his hand. Then he tore it in half and dropped it in the waste paper basket next to Mrs. Ebel's desk. He instantly felt better. His head cleared and his breathing returned to normal. His heart stopped pounding. He walked back to his desk, took a deep breath, exhaled, and sat down. He folded his arms on his desktop and lay his head down sideways across him. He felt sad but relieved as he gazed at the gold stars. Oh no, I don't know why he tore up his homework. I'm not sure about that. Okay, guys, we'll keep reading on chapter 30 next time. So make sure you do your thinking tracks and you turn them in. Okay, see ya.